Well, we need, according to the manual, 25 milliliters of barium hydroxide solution. Let's put that in the beaker for our experiment. And you'll notice a problem here. The problem is that if I try to put my conductivity probe into this solution, the liquid isn't deep enough to cover the tip of the probe. So to help us out with that, We can just get away with adding 25 milliliters of, again, deionized water because we're not going to be adding anything conductive to our experiment. We're just bringing the volume up. So our now the initial rinse. solution is pretty darn conductive. It's 39,000 microsiemens per centimeter. So it's got a huge conductivity, but we'll have to see what happens as we start the experiment. So I'm clamped in position. I can go ahead and hit the start collection button up here. And that turns red and nothing else happened. So let's grab there. I just rescaled my axis. You see the cursor change when I point to it. There's what it's reading right now. I've started a collection and I want to keep this point because this is the point where I've added zero milliliters of acid. So if I click keep, a dialog box will pop up and I'll tell it total acid added, zero milliliters. Okay, it just put the first point on my graph. So now we can get started on the experiment. I've already filled up my burette with the sulfuric acid solution. So we need to take our initial reading. So looking at the burette, looks to me like our initial reading is 0.33 milliliters. So remember, when we're doing burettes, when we're using burettes, we take subtractive readings. So let's turn on the stir and get this thing mixing. Stir a little faster than that. And let's start to add. Now again, we want to add about a milliliter at a time, but don't waste time making it exactly a milliliter because that's just not that important. So let's add some. You may have noticed that precipitate's already starting to form. Hmm, wonder what the identity of that, pre that precipitate is. Let's take our next burette reading. It looks to me like it is 1.21 milliliters. So 1.21 milliliters. That means that I've added 0.88 milliliters to my sample so far. So it was about one. That's exactly what we want to do. Go to the computer. Now I can go over here and click keep again and tell it 0.88 milliliters has been added. And I've started doing my experiment. Now we're ready for our next point. So add a little bit more. Take another reading. We're at about 2.12 milliliters. So 2.12 milliliters is our reading. That means subtract 0.33. That means we've added 1.79 milliliters. Again, click keep, and I've added 1.79 milliliters. And that's the experiment. We're going to keep adding about a milliliter at a time. We're going to keep track of the total that we've added. The computer's going to keep track of that for us to some extent as well and we should be in good shape.
Now, a couple little things on the computer that might help us out. If you hit stop before you're finished with the entire experiment, you have to start over all the way from the beginning. So only hit keep as you continue collecting through your, through your data set. A couple other features that might be useful, let's take a look up at the Analyze menu. If we look at Examine in the Analyze menu, what did it do? It doesn't look like it did anything, but what happens when I bring my cursor over here? Analyze, Examine steps you through each of your data points. So if I want to know what that data point is, it's showing me in this box. It's telling me for this data point that's highlighted with a black circle, the total volume of acid added is 1.79 milliliters, the conductivity is 36,000 and change. So that can be useful for some things. We can get rid of that just by closing that dialog box. Another tool that might be useful when you're looking at your data within Logger Pro is, let's click and drag to highlight, and we could highlight all of our data or just a portion of our data. Go up to Analyze and linear fit and let me grab that logger pro will fit the data that's between the two limits so you see these two square brackets those are defining where i want my linear fit so this gives me a linear fit y equals mx plus b with correlation is an r squared type of value and the nice thing about this is if you point to it, you can actually adjust that linear fit after it's on the screen. So if you made it a little too big, you can knock a point off. If you made it a little bit too small, you can drag to add an extra point. So if you need a linear fit for anything, this might be a useful tool for it to use. And again, you want to get rid of it. Close the dialog box and it goes So away. continue through the experiment until you have all the data points that you need. And then it's just a matter of analyzing that data. What about cleanup after we've done this? Well, we can turn that off. Probably the toughest part about the cleanup is that the solid that you've just formed is kind of clingy. It's really not difficult to clean off but it doesn't rinse off very well. So that's probably not going to get all of it off. It's probably going to help to have a paper towel. That you can wipe the probe off. I'm going to redo that. The same thing is true of the beaker that you use. Get as much of the solid out as you can into the waste container, but it's also going to take a little bit of, of help to get this cleaned out properly. So make sure you use a brush when you wash this out, and you should be able to get the solid out without too much trouble.